thank you very much, Monica. And I guess now that we're all familiar with the key findings of the report, I would like to ask our fellow um, panelists to share their insights with us. And uh, after that, we'll have uh, time for a Q&A. Um, the first person I'd like to ask to uh, give us their um, thoughts on cost of government day is Assemblyman Chuck DeVore, Chairman of the Taxpayer Protection Caucus in the State Assembly, who as such um, has a strong record of standing up um, against uh, growing government on the backs of uh, taxpayers. Assemblyman DeVore was elected to the State Assembly in 2004, currently serves as the Vice Chairman of the Assembly Committee on Revenue and Taxation, the Veterans Affairs Committee, and the Joint Legislative Audit, Com Audit Committee, and uh, he's now running for the U.S. Senate, challenging um, Barbara Boxer. Um, Assemblyman DeVore graciously uh, agreed to author a guest case study for this year's Cost of Government Day report, which you'll find in the back of the report. And uh, coming from California, a state where um, taxpayers have to work not just until today, but um, until August 23rd to pay, pay, pay off their share of um, cost of government, he certainly knows a thing or two about that issue, and um, he's going to share his perspective now. Thank you. It's great to be here, and I'm especially proud to be the Americans for Tax Reform Taxpayer Protection Caucus Chair. You know, they say that as goes California, so goes the nation. Be afraid, be very afraid. California uh, has so many things that are going wrong with our government right now from both the tax and the regulatory and government growth standpoint. It's really hard to narrow it down. But nevertheless, ATR asked me to discuss no more than three. So I tried very hard to, to limit it to just three in my case study. And, and uh, let me give you two of them just kind of in a broad brush and go into a little more detail in the third. The three areas that I selected for the case study uh, had to do with California's overburdened and inefficient welfare system, with our prison system, and with AB 32, which was the Global Greenhouse Gas Emission Reduction Law that we passed three years ago. Again, proving the point, as goes California, so goes the nation. So let's talk about welfare for a moment. California, with 12% of the nation's population, currently accounts for 32% of the nation's welfare caseload. 32%. It's because we have the highest benefits, the most optional benefits, minimal to no fraud checks, and as a result, Californians who would prefer welfare to work have learned how to use the system. In fact, we have imported people who use the welfare system from other states because we are the sole remaining state in the Union that has not really formally implemented the welfare to work reforms from the historic 1996 welfare to work uh, law that signed into law by President Bill Clinton. In fact, in California, simply registering for a community college class, but not actually attending, is sufficient to count as work. And so we have a lot of work to do. Now, for the first time in the many years that we've now had, uh, what is it, six years now that Governor Schwarzenegger has been in office, to his credit, every year he has proposed modest reforms in health care delivery for the state's uh, Medi-Cal system, as well as in CalWORKs, the state's welfare system. And every year, like Blockworth, the Democrats rejected. This year, last month, we actually had modest improvements in reforms in both programs. Not enough, but the first step in the right direction in over a decade in California. Now, the prison system. Contrary to popular mythology because of California's three strikes law, California actually incarcerates, as a percentage of its population, about the national average. Where we're anything but average, is in our cost to incarcerate those prisoners. California spends about $46,000 per prisoner to incarcerate inmates. The national average is about $29,000 per inmate. And of that $46,000 cost, which we're expecting to go up to $49,000 this year, fully $14,000 a year is due to health care. Even though our prisoners prior to the many of lawsuits filed against the state prison system by the ACLU, even though our prisoners were more healthy not only than other prisoners of a similar age and gender in the rest of the country, but actually more healthy than their cohorts on the outside. 
because of course they're working out, they're getting three squares a day, they can't legally smoke or drink. So they were actually healthier on average than people of the same age and gender on the outside. But nevertheless, we're under several prison lawsuits. We have a three-judge panel running our prison system. Not one last illustrative point from California is that we have double the amount of white-collar managers in our prison system than does Texas. So it gives you an example of where we need to go. Now, AB 32, Global Greenhouse Gas Reduction Initiative. California is on track to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 30% in only 11 years. If you eliminated every privately owned automobile in California, you couldn't get there. If you eliminated all electrical production in California, you couldn't get there. And to kind of add insult to injury, if you just eliminated California, one year's worth of economic growth in China would make up the difference of the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Now, what will be the effect? Just like at the national level, here's what the effect is on California. We are exporting manufacturing jobs even more quickly than before to states that generate more greenhouse gases than does California, since California is the most electrically efficient state in the Union. And, of course, once you export that job to, let's say, Tennessee or to China, which is building two coal-fired plants every week, you then re-import the same product that you once made in California, putting it on a ship or an aircraft to ship it to California, spewing pollution and greenhouse gases the whole way, and, of course, manufactured in a place that has more greenhouse gas emissions. So, not only do you lose California jobs, but the world ends up with a net increase in greenhouse gas uh, emissions while California is decreasing. The one bright spot, we do have one place in California that is currently making the targets, the North Coast. Why? Because environmentalists shut down the timber industry so there are no jobs in the North Coast. And it, and it, it ends up when you're unemployed, you don't emit much. So I suppose we can look forward to that in the state of California, that as the unemployment rate goes up, our emissions will go down. Uh, now, last point for maybe 32. A few weeks ago, there was a law that came out of the Assembly giving the state's Air Resources Board, that's the regulatory body that is overseeing these emissions, giving the state's Air Resources Board the regulatory fine authority to completely self-finance its operations as it seeks to fine corporations and individuals who are violating our greenhouse gas emission policies to pay for their own bureaucracy. So you've now invested in a bureaucracy, the conflict of interest to go out and find violations so that they can grow. And if that isn't a cautionary tale for the rest of America, I don't know what is because we are investing executive, legislative, and judicial branch authority invested in this regulatory body to raise their own money to pay for more bureaucrats, more salary, and more benefits. What do you suppose they'll do with that authority? Ladies and gentlemen, the policies of California are the best economic engine you could dream of if you happen to be a resident of Nevada or Arizona or Oregon. And therein is the cautionary tale from the left coast. Thank you.